Are you too embarrassed to tell anyone there is something falling out of your vagina? Is your urine shooting sideways or has it become hard to poop? Well, keep watching so I can help you with these difficult problems. I am Jeff McQuarrie, a Tennessee gynecologist. If your gynecologic problems are dominating your life and you want to take back control, solve your problems with solutions from my channel, Women's Healthcare Answers. So pelvic organ prolapse is defined as anything in the vaginal area that's falling out. Common symptoms of prolapse are vaginal bulge, pressure, or difficulty going to the bathroom to either pee or poop. These difficult problems affect your quality of life and tend to keep you close to home, not spending the precious time with your family that you need. Please stay till the end so you can understand the special surgical and non-surgical treatments that fix pelvic prolapse. In the United States, there's at least a 13% chance in your life that you may have surgery for these type of problems. So it's good to understand how to also prevent these problems which I will inform you of later in this video. Prolapse is quite common, and for a lot of women, it does not bother them. But right now, about 3% of you watching this video have some sort of prolapse. So watch to understand these issues. Prolapse can happen at any time in your life, and I've had patients as young as 23 years old with their uterus falling. But the normal age of prolapse is typically around 70 years old. It can be difficult, though, to know exactly what is happening in the vaginal area and why you're having that bulge and pressure. And it is hard for you to know exactly how big a problem this is. So to understand the pelvic organs that can fall, they are the bladder wall, the rectal wall, the uterus, or if you've had a hysterectomy, the upper vagina can prolapse. This is prolapse that is similar to a hernia where your insides are coming out. So the common symptoms that can cause problems with your normal functions are severe pressure, pain, or difficulty with sex, having a difficult time starting a urinary stream, and severe straining to have a bowel movement. But certainly a bulge that you feel beyond the vaginal opening is very uncomfortable to sit on and is often the reason that patients finally come to see me. The major risk factors for getting pelvic organ prolapse are vaginal delivery, but even being pregnant and having a C-section still has a slight risk. Risk for the bladder falling also increases with age, with obesity, with advancing menopause, with constipation, and with prior hysterectomy, also with connective tissue disorders. And the most common form of this is what's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And this is where people have very flexible joints, but also, if you've had prior surgery for prolapse, you have about a 30% chance of needing another surgery later in life. So it's obvious that if these are the main risk factors, then it's hard to prevent them. You're going to have a baby if you want one, but the things you can do to decrease your risk is, for getting prolapse is to try to treat that constipation, treat it very aggressively with fiber and other medications. Try to keep your weight under control with diet and exercise, and try not to overexert your body lifting very heavy weights. And possibly, even hormone replacement therapy after menopause, if indicated, could help strengthen your pelvic tissues. So if you think you have a prolapse, then go to your doctor. They're going to get a good history from you, and I would want to know information like how many times you've been pregnant, how many vaginal deliveries you've had, have you had any bad tears during those deliveries? And do you have difficulty or pain with intercourse? Do you have problems being able to pee or have a bowel movement? Also, do you have urine loss and urgency which can be associated with these symptoms? Next, we do a physical exam to determine the extent of the prolapse and determine what components are prolapsing. Your doctor will determine this by looking at your bladder, the urethra, the uterus, or the upper vagina and if you've had a hysterectomy. And the last thing they're going to look at is a bulge of the rectum into the vagina. On that examination, I would try to quantify how bad the problems are, and we call these stages of prolapse. So stage zero is a normal vagina, 
With stage one, some component of the vaginal area has fallen, but is still at least one centimeter above the vaginal hymen. When the bulge is within one centimeter above or below, that is called stage two. Now stage four prolapses when the vagina has completely fallen out and stage three is somewhere in between. This is the most common system to quantify prolapse, but there are more complicated ways. But if your main problems of prolapse is the bladder, then it's called a cystocele. If it's a rectal problem, then it's called a rectocele. If the uterus prolapses, it's simply called a uterine prolapse. And if you've had a hysterectomy, then you have vaginal vault prolapse. So the urethra can also fall and become too mobile, typically causing stress incontinence, which is leaking with coughing and sneezing. So if you like this video so far, hit the like button. It really helps with YouTube and please subscribe because if you miss any of my new medical videos, who am I going to talk to? Just give me a thumbs up and please comment. So back to the information you want. So what are the common treatments for, of prolapse? Well, I recommend vaginal estrogen, especially if you're postmenopausal and you don't have any risk factors that would keep you from using it. Estrogen can really strengthen the vaginal tissues. But also Kegel's pelvic floor exercises can be very helpful in strengthening the muscles, but they still cannot repair torn tissues. But the next option is to use a vaginal pessary. And this is typically a ring that is placed in the vaginal area in order to hold up the bladder, uterus, and vagina. There are other types of pessaries for more severe prolapse issues. But a pessary can be very effective in holding up prolapse, and you can learn how to use it by removing and replacing your, yourself. But ultimately, if you feel too awkward about that, then your doctor or nurse practitioner can actually remove, clean, and replace the pessary for you at intervals, typically somewhere between three to five months. So it is common to have a slight discharge with a pessary and sometimes even a little odor. Pessaries are especially appropriate for elderly women who are in poor health and not sexually active. But if no other treatment has helped, then surgery is indicated. There are multiple approaches, both vaginal, laparoscopic, robotic, and through an abdominal incision, and I've done thousands of these surgeries. The specific surgeries for upper vaginal prolapse are sacral colpopexy, using mesh to suspend the upper vagina to the tailbone. Also, uterosacral ligament suspension, and this resuspends the upper vagina to natural ligaments in the pelvis closer to the tailbone. Another is sacrospinous ligament suspension, and this is really my favorite approach, where I attach the uterus or the upper vagina to a strong, stable ligament that runs between the tailbone and the pelvic bone, and this is deep in the pelvis. This can be done with stitches or anchors and has great success. Surgery for other prolapses include anterior vaginal repair, and this is a repair of the bladder, and you may know this as a bladder tack. What I'm doing with this surgery is stitching together the good tissues that have separated to make it tight again. A posterior vaginal repair is a rectal tack, pulling together those good tissues that have separated over the rectum and that reduces that bulge. A vaginal repair can also be done with mesh or skin graft materials. Mesh has become very controversial and it was removed from the market by the US FDA April 2019 for bladder and rectal repair. But mesh is still used, but not only used with either urethral slings or as I mentioned above, the sacral colpopexy. Skin graft materials though can be very strong and your body will grow into those tissues to increase the strength of your prayer. I typically only use dermal grafts if you've already had failures in the past, but some physicians use it as a first repair and that's acceptable as well. The best thing is that all these surgeries can be minimally invasive with typically no more than small incisions and an overnight stay. I personally do over 98% of my surgeries completely outpatient. Now you may not qualify to be an outpatient if you have severe cardiac or severe lung disease. So the last low risk surgical technique is colpoclysis. This is technically a closure of the vagina typically done when sexual activity is no longer desired. This procedure is done by sewing the front wall to the back wall of the vagina. 
It's very effective and it's an easy technique, especially if you are very ill and you cannot tolerate general anesthesia or have severe heart or lung diseases. It can be done even under local numbing anesthesia. Well, the main thing that I wanted to emphasize in this video is that you don't need to be embarrassed about your prolapse. Many women have prolapse issues and are just not talking about it. Please be willing to go to your doctor and ask for help for these problems. A gynecologist who is specially trained in these complex issues is called a urogynecologist and a pelvic reconstructive surgeon. And that is my special training and certification. There are also many urologists who have special surgical training in this as well. Just seek help and don't suffer in silence. You need to be able to start enjoying your life again and not let these problems hold you back. Hopefully, you feel like you learned something. And as always, I have enjoyed being here with you and I would love to help solve your problems at Women's Healthcare Answers. Remember, this video is meant for information purposes only. Please consult your own healthcare provider, but it's okay to reference the information I give you.